Well, the function is not defined in the origin. You can't really, do, because if you put 0, 0, it will be 0 at the bottom. You can't divide by 0. However, we have to, I mean, it's not set in print here. But what, what we meant to show here is that function doesn't have a limit when x approaches 0. And we can do it via this theorem we just discovered with you. We can do it by, remember, the theorem said function has a limit, b or any other value, when the same limit come up across any sequence which approach the, or, the, the, point of, uh, the point A. In this case, point is 0. So for this sequence, look at this. If I take, for this function, if I take this sequence of points, which approach origin from on the x axis from the right hand side, which one is this one? If I take this sequence, which approaches origin on the horizontal level, if you compute your function on this particular sequence, it will be 0. And therefore, the limit across this sequence will be 0. On the other hand, if I take another sequence, oh, it's just, just what I said, the limit across this sequence will be 0. If I take another sequence, like this, it's another choice of a sequence. Here it is. Along the bisector. Here it is. If you take a sequence by bisector, the limit, the same limit of the same function, but over the different sequence, delivers one half, right? Just sub in one on n, one on n across this one. It will be one on n square, and it will be one on n square plus one on n square. This is double of one on n square. It's exactly what you see here. It's one half. So across two different sequences, fun function delivers two different limits. According to the theory we just discussed with you, such a function cannot possibly have a limit at the origin. Because if it does, it must have limit across every possible sequence identical to each other. And this time we have two, we have observation of two different limits across two different sequences. That's how you disprove that the limit exists in the point. You try to come up with two sequences which deliver different values. The, like I said, the other way it's hard because you can't check every sequence for the limit. So when you go the other way, when you prove that the function has a limit at the point, at the point you, have to go, you have to go via inequality of some sort. At my first example today, remember there was this inequality between d of f and 1 and d of x, x, y, 0. My first example today. But when you disprove, that's how you disprove, based on my theorem via sequences. Here's another example. This function. Again, for this function, in the origin, you can come up with two sequences which deliver different values. And that's why in the origin, function doesn't have a limit. Look at this. First sequence I suggest is this. Let me just open both of them at the same time. Yeah. If you take the one approaching to the origin from the horizontal direction, then the function is always 0 on that sequence, and that's why the limit is also 0. If you try the bisectorial approach, as in my previous example, I didn't do it here, but look at this. If you take bisectorial example, 1 on n, 1 on n, what happens here? Look at this. Let's just try to compute it from the top of our heads. If I compute here, we can compute it here. If I compute it here, 1 on n, 1 on n, it will be. 1 on n cube, right, in the enumerator. And the denominator, it will be, well, it's not the denominator. 1 on n square plus uh, 1 on n 4. I put them around. I mean, for the enumerator, you have 1 on n cube. x4 gives you 1 on n 4. And y4 gives you, this is the value of the function on the bisectorial approach. So this is the value of my function on 1 on n, 1 on n. So if you take bisectorial approach for this function, this one, what would, what would be the limit of this sequence? What your experience from the first year tells you. 
right? What's the limit of this sequence when n goes to the infinity? I'm sorry, this equal sign is missing, of course, here. It is zero, thank you very much. It is zero. That's right. Uh, I'm, t I'm, I'm trying to justify my choice of quite, quite non-trivial approach here. If you choose the approach as, as, in this, as, in, as in this example, if you choose the bisectorial approach for this function, it doesn't work. Because if you take the bisectorial approach here, it still gives you zero. It's, that's not enough evidence for, for concluding that limit doesn't exist. But if you take approach along the parabola, if you take this approach, 1 on n, 1 on n square, and if you do computation for this approach, that's how function will look in this case. And that is 1 half again. So this time again, we managed to find two approaches which deliver different values. And that's why we, again can, we, we can conclude again that the limit of this function when you approach 0 does not exist. 